Hi, I'm Sean Cruikshanks from the SRAM Race Department, and today we're going to install the Eagle 1x12 drivetrain. To complete this install, the following tools are required. A 3mm hex wrench, a 5mm and 8mm hex wrench and bit socket, a T25 Torx wrench and bit socket, a torque wrench, a chain tool, a housing and cable cutter, cassette lock ring tool, an Eagle chain gap tool, calipers, a bicycle repair stand, derailleur hanger alignment gauge, bicycle grease and friction paste, derailleur housing and non-sealed aluminum ferrules and cable tips. For full suspension bicycles, you will also need a shock pump and a tape measure. Okay. Our first step is to install our GXP crank set into our press fit GXP bottom bracket. First, remove both of the bearing shields and apply grease to the bearings. Reinstall the shields with the flower shaped shield on the non drive side bearing. Next, apply grease to the crank spindle bearing race, splines, and the spindle threads. Apply grease to the wave washer and slide it onto the spindle. Next, you will need to measure the bottom bracket shell. For 89.5, 104.5, and 121 bottom bracket shells, install the included spacer onto the crank spindle. 92 and 107 mil shells don't require a spacer. Insert the crank spindle into the bottom bracket until the spline comes through the non-drive side bearing. Install the flower shaped shield onto the spindle if it came off during crank installation. Align the spindle splines with the splines on the non-drive side crank arm and tighten the crank bolt to 48 to 54 newton meters. Check for play by moving the crank arm side to side. If there is any play, Tighten the crank bolt to 54 newton meters and check again. If there is still play, remove the non-drive side crank arm, apply additional grease to the splines, reinstall the crank arm, tighten the crank bolt and check for play again. Our next step is to install the 12 speed Eagle cassette. Apply grease to the threads of the XD driver body. Install the Eagle cassette onto the driver body by hand. Then use a cassette lock ring tool to tighten the lock ring to 40 newton meters. Now that we've installed the cassette, our next step is to install the wheel into the frame. Install the rear wheel onto the frame and secure it in place with the through axle or quick release. Next, we are going to install the rear derailleur onto the frame. Use a derailleur hanger alignment tool to make sure the hanger is straight before installing the derailleur. Do not apply grease to the threads of the derailleur mounting bolt or hanger. Make sure the B-Adjust tab is positioned properly against the hanger. There must not be a gap between the B-washer and the rear derailleur hanger. Use a 5mm hex wrench to thread the derailleur mounting bolt into the hanger. Then tighten the bolt to 10 to 12 newton meters. Make sure the B-Adjust tab stays pressed against the hanger while tightening the mounting bolt. Now we're going to install the shifter onto the handlebar. Apply friction paste to the inner surfaces of the MMX clamp and the brake lever. Before installing the Matchmaker X clamp onto the handlebar, you must first customize the clamp for your desired configuration. In this video, we will use the MMX clamp with a SRAM guide brake lever an eagle shifter. Install the MMX clamp onto the handlebar with the brake lever. Adjust the lever and clamp to the desired position and tighten the body bolt to 2.8 to 3.4 newton meters. Align either the inboard or outboard shifter mounting hole to the shifter bracket. Install the shifter mounting bolt and tighten it to 1 to 2 newton meters. Turn the barrel adjuster clockwise until it stops, then turn it counterclockwise two full rotations. Now it's time to adjust the high limit screw. Viewing the derailleur from the rear, use a 3mm hex wrench to adjust the high limit screw 
so that the center of the upper pulley wheel is aligned with the outboard edge of the smallest cassette cog. It's time to install the cable and housing. Measure a length of housing that is long enough to allow the handlebar to rotate without pulling the housing from any cable stops or the shifter. Rotate the handlebar as far to each side as possible, holding the housing in place. For full suspension bicycles, the housing length should also take into account suspension movement. The housing at the derailleur should not form any large loops or be kinked at the cable stops or at the derailleur. Install housing ferrules on any housing ends. Route the cable from the shifter through the housing to the rear derailleur. Click the small shift lever several times to make sure the shifter is in the highest gear position. Route the cable through the derailleur and into the groove of the cable anchor washer. Pull the cable taut and use the T25 Torx wrench to tighten the bolt to 4 to 5 Newton meters. Cut the cable and install a cable tip. Now that we've installed the cable and housing, it's time to adjust the low limit screw. Shift to the largest cog. Viewing the derailleur from the rear, use a 3 mil hex wrench to adjust the low limit screw so that the center of the upper pulley wheel is aligned with the center of the smallest cassette cog. Now we are going to measure and install the chain. To properly size the chain on a full suspension frame, the rear shock must be compressed to the point in the travel where the rear axle is farthest from the bottom bracket. Wrap the chain around the largest rear cog and the chain ring. For full suspension bikes, add one inner link and one outer link where the chain starts to overlap. For hardtails, add two inner links and two outer links. Use a chain tool to remove the excess links. leaving an inner link at both ends of the chain. Pull the lower derailleur cage forward and push the cage lock button to lock the derailleur in the extended position. Route the chain through the derailleur. With both ends of the chain below the chainstay, install the power lock so that the arrow points toward the derailleur and the curve of the power lock faces away from the chainstay. Pull the lower derailleur cage forward until the cage lock button unlocks. Then carefully let the cage rotate backwards. Caution. The derailleur is spring-loaded and will return from the lock position rapidly. Keep fingers clear of pinch points. Rotate the cranks to bring the power lock above the chainstay. Make sure the arrow on the power lock now points toward the crank set and that it curves away from the chainstay. Engage the rear brake lever and push down on the crank arm. You should hear and feel the power lock snap into place. If you were installing Eagle onto a full suspension bike, inflate the suspension to the desired pressure or reinstall the shock. Now we are going to set our B-gap adjustment with the Eagle B-gap adjustment tool. For full suspension bicycles, compress the rear suspension to the desired sag position while adjusting the chain gap. It might be easiest to have a friend help with this adjustment. Attach the chain gap measurement tool to the derailleur upper pulley. Use a 3 mil hex wrench to adjust the B-adjust screw until the tips of the teeth of the largest cog align with the groove of the chain gap tool. Remove the chain gap tool from the derailleur. Lastly, we are going to adjust shifting performance using our barrel adjuster. Turn the cranks and shift through the gears to check shift performance. If the shifting from a large cog to a smaller cog is slow, turn the barrel adjuster on the shifter clockwise. If shifting from a small cog to a larger cog is slow, turn the barrel adjuster counterclockwise. This concludes the Eagle 1x12 drivetrain installation. Thanks for watching, and now it's time to go ride your Eagle 1x12 drivetrain.